This episode is brought to you by Steelroot, a national leader in helping companies meet cybersecurity compliance requirements and prepare for CMMC. Their experienced team of engineers and consultants assist organizations of all sizes to implement and manage IT systems that meet the technical requirements in DFARS and CMMC. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of 123 CMMC. My name is Dana Mantilla, and I will be your host. And our guest today is Bob Zinga. Hi, Bob. How are you? Hey, Dana. Thank you so much for having me on your show today. Thank you for offering Thank you. your time. Appreciate it. We have a very exciting topic today. We are going to talk about MFA and security awareness. So let's jump right in. So what is MFA? So uh, MFA, that's uh, multi-factor authentication, right? So basically in 2021, 21st century, it's pretty much uh, absolutely not acceptable for anybody to be able to log into any systems really without having at least a second factor uh, of authentication. So for most people out there, the only control really they, they have, right, between what they care about, their sensitive or confidential data and uh, the hackers out there is just their password. So that's one factor of authentication. So you need to have multiple, at least at least two for all of the systems you've got. That's really the um, best security practices today. Yeah, and you're right. It's something that everybody really needs to start taking seriously because the idea of just having the same password and the same email that everyone uses to log into every single different account yes. and all the data breaches that have been out there, it's it's out there somewhere. If that's the way you're operating, it's definitely probably been exposed somewhere. So that's, that's uh, absolutely. absolutely the great majority of all data breaches out out there. They really uh, exploit two things. One is the uh, password, and number two, uh, phishing. That's that's pretty much uh, all they they do. Yep. So here's something that some people may not even have thought about. So what is the difference between, how is MFA different from 2FA? So uh, I guess 2FA is a subset of MFA, right? MFA is multi-factor authentication, 2FA is only only two. So when we talked about multi-factor authentication, uh, there are, I guess, three known categories. One is something you know, like your password. Another one is something you have. Uh, for example, in the military, we all have a uh, card card, military card, which we actually have to have in order to be able to access our system. So you put in your card, something you have, and then something you know, your PIN number or your uh, password. So that's two-factor authentication right there. But then there is a third category as well, uh, something you are, like biometrics. For anyone who has like a um, modern uh, phone or mobile device, they, they're going to have like you no know, face scan or... Uh, fingerprint or anything like that, something you you are. So those are kind of the three uh, categories of uh, multi-factor authentication. And you need at least two of them for really any systems you uh, log into. Some, something kind of kind of funny, uh, I think it was maybe three or four years ago, one of the, the banks I um, bank with, I've been with them for quite a while. For whatever reason, they didn't have 2FA. Uh, for login, all they had is just username and password. I'm like, no, there is absolutely no way I'm going to continue banking with you guys if you don't enable 2FA. I actually shamed them on Facebook, and uh, you know, a few months later, they went ahead and uh, gave us at least the option to enable 2FA. Really, in 2021, I'm going to tell you, if your bank doesn't give you the option to enable 2FA, bank somewhere else, uh, because your account will eventually get hacked and you're going to lose real, real money. That is a very, very good point. And that's definitely a good first account to go check on is your bank account. So that's great that you did yes. that and that they actually followed through and said, oh, he's right here. We should probably do this. But so that's a good that's point. Okay. Just put your money somewhere else if it's not going to, they don't give you the option to do that. So that's really good. All right. So obviously now, so why is MFA important? Yes, uh, MFA is extremely uh, important, especially uh, today um, because, you no. Know, uh, even if you use a complex password, a long password, like you no know, uppercase, lowercase, special characters, and later, uh, eventually, especially with uh, you know, quantum uh, computers, which is on the rising now, it's just going to be a matter of time before anybody who really, really wants to get into your account may be able to break into uh, your password. However, if you have uh, multi-factor authentication, even if they get one of those factors, which is you know, something you know, your password, they cannot be who you are or they don't have what you've got. So by by having a second factor, whether it's a text to your phone or an application that gives you a very uh, unique random code or you know, your fingerprint or your face scan, then even if they break into your password, they still cannot access your data because they only have one factor of several factor to get into the data, if, if that makes, makes sense. So again, that's why in 2021, 
and we, we just celebrated right the 18th uh, anniversary for national cyber security awareness month last last month uh, october but really the, the message going forward is yes you absolutely absolutely have to enable at least two two fa on all of the accounts you are using very very critical yeah, one thing I like to point out too is in addition to the 2FA having the, the, the multi-factor is because let's say, for example, you have your phone and someone takes your phone and you don't have a passcode on your phone and they can get right into that phone. They can then start resetting your password or getting the text message for the 2FA. So that's yes. the other thing too. Put, put a lock on your phone, number one, and then having that third application, they wouldn't be able to do that because they are not them. So they would not have something that was them, like a retina scan or something. So Absolutely. Uh, and and if you have a mobile device, a phone and an iPad, a, a tablet, absolutely have two, two FA. You need to have at least a passcode and uh, some type of fingerprint or face scan or a uh, uh, password, right? Some, something you are, something you have, uh, and something you know. Very, very, very critical. Because I mean, if you just think about it today, almost everything we do, we have to have a phone now, right? I, I can't really imagine life without my phone today. Right. Absolutely, my entire digital life is on this little device, right? If this device is lost and somebody is able to get into it, I mean, uh, my life is pretty much over. So it is very important. So make sure to uh, keep it safe and secure and uh, update your, your, your phone software yes. as well very, very frequently. Takes two seconds to set up, right? So yes. Okay. So now the next one is: Are all MFAs equal? Well, not exactly. Especially when you come to the second factor, something you have, right? I think the uh, simplest way of uh, doing that is after you enter in your password, you could get like a uh, text message, like SMS, and then tap in the code. Uh, one problem with SMS is it's already been uh, broken because people are able to actually use uh, uh, kind of like uh, those uh, SIM, SIM card and exploit them and be able to receive somebody else's text uh, on their phone. So that has already been been done. It's not easy to do, but but it's already been done. What, what is even much better than that is if you use an application like Google Authenticator. Uh, I love Alfie or Microsoft Authenticator is, is another one. That's like an, an actual application where you have to authenticate again, and then it uh, gives you uh, the uh, unique code you, you need to then access whatever uh, website you are trying to, to get into. That's much, much more secure than just having a, a text message. Because if you think about that too, uh, many people, instead of using um, the phone number they, they get from their uh, no, ISP provider, they actually have like um, Google Voice numbers, which you can access from the internet just using your email so if somebody's able to break into your email they're going to be able to get that sms text very very easy right so uh that's that's why uh, it's really really better if you can to use uh an application like google authenticator or Alfi and uh, then be able to use that as your second factor on all of the uh websites you have to uh, log into the new Department of Defense's Cybersecurity Program, CMMC, can be very confusing and overwhelming. A3 is a cloud-based collaborative environment for an organization seeking certification. A3 builds CMMC packages and has access to a marketplace of consultants, RPOs, and assessor C3PAOs. A3 creates a roadmap for each cybersecurity requirement and helps break things down step by step. Please visit cyberdatainteligence.com forward slash A3. Yeah, that's really an, an excellent an excellent point to use something else like that. And, you know, one thing people always say when it comes to all this stuff is they say, oh, it takes too, too long, takes too much extra time, you know. And if they ever stopped and thought about how much time it would take if somebody does get into your accounts and take over your accounts or go in and take your money out. And that's the problem yes. is that no one ever thinks it's ever going to happen to them. So they say, well, this is going to waste more time. No, 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 no. Take that time is going to be time well spent versus the time if you do have somebody that gets in there. Absolutely. I, I guess in security, what we're doing really is uh, managing risk, right? And uh, when we know for sure that you know, hackers out there are breaking into uh, password and 2FA is one little thing that could you know, protect your confidential information is definitely worth it. So I guess we, we, we need to, uh, to change and think of it like, no risk and reward if you really enjoy your phone you enjoy doing online banking which is very very convenient but you want to make sure nobody else gets into your account but you then it's definitely uh, worth it yes mm -hmm. absolutely agree 
Yeah, absolutely. All right, so when and how often should users complete the SAT? First explain to us what is the SAT and then how often should users be completing? Yes, so uh, SAT, that's the uh, security awareness training, right? So um, for most organization, uh, when you become a new employee, before they give you system access, you have to go through this security awareness training where they tell you about all of the um, policies and the controls that are uh, in place and what to do and what not to do, what not to do right with uh, company equipment and uh, so forth. So for, for a very long time, uh, the best practice was to do the security awareness training only during onboarding. You did one time and you are done, but that's definitely not good enough because threats do, do change, right? So uh, like at my company, we celebrate uh, national cyber security uh, awareness, uh, I mean, national cyber, yeah, cyber security awareness month every single uh, year uh, since about uh, three years ago when, when I joined, we kind of made it a, a big deal. So we take that opportunity to every single year uh, really um, provide additional security awareness tr training to uh, our uh, users. So it's really something you should be doing during onboarding and uh, once a, at least at least once once a year after that. I know in the government, like in the military, we do it every single year, like in October, which is um, the new fiscal year, pretty much everybody in, in the Navy is required by December to complete the security uh, awareness training, which I think is very, very good uh, practice. Yeah, and it's funny when you say that because think about onboarding. Let's say someone's been there for even seven years, eight years. <laughs> in the world, a whole different place when it comes to all that threat stuff. So you're absolutely right. That's true. Updates and, and, and the additional reminder that, oh, yeah, we got to keep doing this, you know, keep moving forward. So once a year is, is good, at least once a year, I, I, su I suggest. So that was really, really good. So is there anything else you want to throw out there before we wrap it up? Uh, yes, I guess just one thing I, I mentioned earlier, most of the uh, breach we have seen in the no, last couple of years is really due to through um, people cracking password. That's why MFA is extremely important. But also when we talk about security awareness tr uh, training, uh, I think we need to make security training more interactive and try to, to make it fun so people actually learn, right? Because security privacy was a kind of very, very boring uh, subject. But but I think if, if you can turn it into a, a, a game, that would be fantastic. Like one thing I, I do, at my job, the Navy does that too. From time to time, we kind of send a phishing uh, campaign. They are fake phishing email, but we just want to see if people have actually learned the training or uh, if they're going to be clicking, you know, on uh, attachment and uh, links from uh, uh, email they really do not uh, expect. And if they do, then they have to take the training all all over again. Really try to make it interactive and expose your uh, people uh, so that they are involved in the training where they actually gain. Uh, new uh, skills uh, because you know, a, a lot of the bad guys out there, some of them are extremely smart, but I think the great majority are not that smart at all, right? For, for example, with Microsoft product, we have Patch Tuesday. Every Tuesday of every month, the first Tuesday of every month, Microsoft tells the entire world, hey, this is what's wrong with my operating system. These are all of the vulnerability and hey, guess what? Here is the fix. But for most people, they don't apply the fixes for six months, sometimes even a year. So the bad guys have time now to actually go there and exploit those, vul those vulnerabilities, right? So uh, many of, of those hackers are not really much smarter than than we we are. They they just uh, it's just uh, uh, an opportunity for them to really exploit vulnerabilities that everybody really should uh, know about. So making sure you are patching your system uh, very frequently. You know, I, I would say at least once every thirty days. Uh, also enabling MFA everywhere. Uh, it is allowed, and for those few applications that may not have a two FA uh, as an option, you probably need to stop using them. I am really serious. Uh, don't use those application anymore because eventually they are going to uh, to uh, to get hacked. And then you know, uh, do security training at, at least once uh, every every year. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, and yeah, you just brought up a good point. That's a good thing for MSPs to point out to their clients what you know what their patch policy is and it's yes. a good question for people if you're looking for maybe a new msp or you know you're talking to your cso or somebody you know how often are we doing this what's our schedule it like because you know i talk to people all the time about how business owners are not technical people and they don't even know what questions to ask so if you're an msp and you could make it as very simple as somebody you know can understand and you say this is our patch you know policy this is our schedule or however it is um, that's as you're saying that's obviously a very important thing and as you're saying microsoft is announcing every tuesday guess <laughs> what we found some more <laughs> exactly well that's great well i really really appreciate your time and uh, expertise when it comes to all this this is very important stuff that we really need to start taking seriously so thank you very much bob for coming on
Thank you. I really uh, appreciate the opportunity. Good, good. And thank you, everybody, for listening and watching. And we hope to see you again on the next episode. Till then, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.